These are online people. You've never met these people in your life. You honestly don't know if they're 100% real. You know, it's so easy to lie on Facebook. And that's scary about social media. Once you put stuff out there, anyone can see that it. And it's a devil's notebook. This guy randomly started messaging me on Facebook. Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and they all had my picture. It was picture. all automatically like a red flag there. She was pretending to be somebody she else. She was saying that that was me. Not actually talking to this person. I didn't know where to go from there. No one could make this girl take it like, down. I don't know who I'm talking to. Like, this isn't who I think I'm talking to. I don't know what you people want. They had been talking to her for, for months, and they actually thought they were talking to me. This is the story of one young woman and what she went through when she found her pictures were all over social media. The problem was, it wasn't her. It wasn't real. And she couldn't stop the person who was making it happen. At the time I knew like what I was doing and what I was doing was wrong, but if I let that profile go, I would literally have to like completely like, start my whole entire life. My name is Michaela Bastian. I go to Brockport. I hope to do something creative in my life. And yeah, I love it here. I have a bunch of friends and life's good. Michaela Bastian has been an active user of social media for several years, but she never thought she'd encounter cyber deception until she met Katie Austin. I was at a concert with my friends, the 98 PXY uh, Summer Jam. We were listening to the music and then all of a sudden I hear, Katie Austin, Katie Austin. And I was like, that's weird. But it kept getting louder and the girl kept looking at me and I'm like, that's not my name. I think she must be mistaking me for someone else. But she came over and she pushed me. And then she was continuously calling me Katie Austin. And I'm like, that's not my name. I'm sorry. You mu like, you must be thinking of someone else. And she's like, no, this is you. And she pulled up um, different websites. Um, she pulled up Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and they all had my picture, my profile picture on my actual um, Facebook and stuff like that. It was all of my actual things, my family, my friends. She was posting things about like going on vacation with my friends and these are events that I was actually doing so seeing that like I was like wow someone is actually in my life looking at all of my stuff and putting it out there for people to see but it wasn't me. While she was at the concert some random people came up and wanted to fight her because she had supposedly stole their boyfriend. She said that she had been with him for a year and he was going to leave his girlfriend of a year for her and he had never met her and he thought that it was me so it was really scary but that was the first appearance of Katie Austin that I had. When this all happened for the first time we ended up kind of blowing it off thinking that it wasn't as big of a deal as it really is. There was nothing we could really do. I didn't know who it was. I mean, it was scary, but there really wasn't anything I could do. Over the year, the next year, it kind of kept happening over and over again where it, was, it wasn't going away. I had this call from a girl from my school. And Kayla had found out through a friend um, of Katie's who was kind of friends with Michaela and felt like she needed to know who it was and what was going on and what was happening. She was like, hi, my friend is doing this. I'm not sure why she's doing this, but I feel like you should know because I think that it is wrong and it's scary and I know that you're scared about it. I've been hearing around. So I just wanted to let you know that it is this girl. And I was like, wow, like that's so strange. I go to school with this girl. I walk this, these halls with this girl and she's literally using all of my things and we go to school together, like it's just so strange. So I texted her and I was like, hi, could you please take this down? Like it's, it's not right, it's scaring me and you're, you're falsely using my things. And she was like, yeah, I'll take it down, I'm sorry. And she apologized and I was like, okay, maybe it's down, whatever. And so I tried to look at the websites and I, I couldn't find any of them. And I was like, okay, she took them down, this is fine. It just kept elevating over and over and over. A few weeks later, I get this message from a random boy on my Facebook. And he was like, you need to delete this account, it's a fake account. And I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, there's another girl named Katie Austin and she's using all of your photos and like, either that's a fake account or you're a fake account and I want to know who's a fake account because I'm talking to this girl. Every day we would come home from work 
Michaela would come home from school and it was another story about Katie and how Katie was ruining the image that my daughter was supposed to be creating. I went to my parents again and I was like, we need to do something about this. Like no one else, she's not going to do anything. She's not gonna take it down. In our school districts, we have sheriffs that work within in the district and we ask their opinion about what we should do. Um, in both instances, those sheriffs said that there's really not much you can do. We felt like we had to do more, so we did go down and talk to the state police, and nothing was resolved with that either. They basically told me that there was nothing that I could do about it because she wasn't using it or doing anything for money. So she wasn't getting anything out of it money-wise, so it's not illegal. I texted her and I was like, please take it down. Like, it's not right and my parents are upset and I'm upset. There's people that are coming to my house. There's people that are calling me and thinking that I'm you. And there was more occasions that that happened. It wasn't just that boy. She would come home and she would be upset. She, you know, was causing problems with her relationship with her boyfriend because she had boys trying to contact her. I didn't know where to go from there. I mean, no one could make this girl take it down. I was at, a, at the park down in town and it was a festival and I was working in a booth for a fundraiser and this girl and some of these other girls started walking around and I can feel my emotions just taking over and getting very emotional as a mom like oh my gosh you know here's this mother instinct coming through I need to do something I need to say something this is not okay you can't take my daughter's pictures you can't take my pictures you can't take my family's pictures because not only was she taking my daughter's identity and changing it she was also taking my picture and gave me a fake name, um, gave my son a fake name, gave my husband a fake name. So we all had like this whole other family. It was very bizarre and very weird. She wanted to make it look realistic. So she, she went and she made other profiles of all of my friends. I mean, I had a core group of probably five really, really good friends, and she made profiles, fake profiles, for every single one of them, mixed up their names, and um, gave them their own profiles with all of the stuff that they were actually doing too. And she did this so she could actually have conversations with herself. So she would log into my account, say something, log into their account, and respond to it. So it looked like this girl was real. She said she was going to stop, but it did not. It did not stop. She couldn't take it down because she had made relationships and, like, so many personal connections through doing this that she couldn't lose those. And I was like, wow, like, this is getting a little bit, a little bit too in like intense, she's actually very caught up in the relationships that she is making with these people. I feel like the end to it all came when we graduated. Life kind of went on and it was kind of like a high school thing. If I could ask Katie Austin one thing, I would have to add just want to know why. It pretty much started, um, I don't know, I was like going through a really, really, really rough time. Um, I had a lot of, you know, rough times like in my childhood and that kind of like manifests itself into like my preteen years, I guess. I only had like one like really, really, really close friend and she had like kind of like moved away and was like kind of moving back and forth and kind of doing that thing. So I was like kind of like on my own for a while and I guess I was just like really, really lonely and I had a lot of like self-esteem issues. Um, I had a lot of not feeling like worthy or like lovable or likable or personable. Um, I always felt like I had to literally be someone else for like anyone to like me. Obviously she's a really, really, really pretty girl and you know, people just naturally just wanted to talk to her. It was really, quick how it kind of like rolled like as soon as I like put it up like so many different people like wanted to talk to me um and I kind of just you know I fed into that I fed into like being liked and 
people like wanting my attention. There was a point in this, which was kind of like the blunt of it, where I honestly did not have my own personal life. Like I didn't have people that I spoke to as myself. There was a time where like the only like relationships I had were through this profile. And I think that's why it was so difficult for me to let it go. I started in 2009. I was done with it either December of 2013 or January of 2014. When I did end the profile, it took me a little bit to kind of like get back on my feet and kind of um, get back into a place where I felt comfortable and happy with like myself and the way things were going. I mean, I, I know that I wasn't like intentionally doing it like to her. Like I wasn't trying to like attack her in any way. I don't hate her. I don't dislike her. Um, I feel like a lot of people thought that like I hated her so much that I was doing it like out of spite and that was not the case. Um, but once I did and the profile, I mean, I wouldn't go back to, to that. I'm much, much, much happier now. You know, having like real relationships and real people I can like hang out with and see and talk to and that kind of thing. Using social media in a deceptive way is not uncommon, and neither are the reasons behind it. The pressure to be on social media, if someone doesn't feel good about themselves for whatever reason, and sometimes you may look at someone, some, a person may say, oh, I'm not pretty or I'm not handsome, I don't look good, or, my body's terrible or whatever, and you look at them and you say, oh, you're perfectly fine. They don't see it that way they see some type of degraded image. For Katie Austin, creating fake identities meant a way to make relationships, and she is not alone. In 2016, there were 1.6 billion active profiles on Facebook, but not all represent real people. In 2015, the Huffington Post reported at least 170 million of those profiles were fake. Self-esteem is so tied in with is there somebody who loves me unconditionally? Is there somebody who, when I fall and scrape my knee, comes and cleans it up and sticks a Band-Aid on it? So the, the process of getting to the place Katie got to in order for this to happen, I'm guessing, I don't know her, but from having worked with a lot of kids, a, a lot of heartache probably went into the process of bringing her to that point in time and a feeling of worthlessness. Whatever happened, you know, really wounded her, I, I think, at least from my experience. And it's a lot of work to climb out of that place. It was great to hear her say, I'm in a much better place. She went through a lot. She lost a lot because of the things that I did. And I genuinely do feel sorry for anything negative that happened to her because of what I was doing.